Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at The Great Hall, which is out of the new wave of Harry Potter sets. This is set number 75954. It has 878 pieces, and it comes with 10 minifigures, as well as some more accessories. So with all that said, let's get into the review. Okay, and first off, we're going to be taking a look at the main section of The Great Hall, which as you can see here is the dining room area, as well as the front door. From the front side, this looks like a very accurate version of the great hall it looks like a scaled down version but it's still accurate in my opinion i think that they did a really great job shaping all the windows and shaping the roof line and getting all of the peaks where they needed to be i also agree that the front door looks really good my only complaint about the front door is that obviously this set is very very scaled down from minifigure scale but the front door seems to be a little bit too big in my opinion uh, and it's not terribly big but it's it's a little bit too big in my opinion other than that, I have no other complaints about the aesthetic look of the main section of the Great Hall here. And turning it around, you can see that this is the inside dining area. If you notice, there are floating candles in the ceiling, just like in the movie. With these little flags, you can change them. Both of them change to the opposite house. So you can decide which house won the house cup, as well as change of decorations. Now, while this is not minifigure scale, you can easily fit minifigures in here and they can sit comfortably at the tables. Well, stand in this case because they have short legs, but for example, there you go, there's Harry and Hermione just sitting at the table and I think that it looks really good. In addition, you can have professors at the main table. They would be sitting normally, but you can have professors sitting at the main table comfortably and there are no problems there. So, well, like I said, while this is not minifigure scale, it comfortably fits minifigures as a playset, And it also looks great on the other side. Taking a closer look over here next to Dumbledore, you can see that there is Dumbledore's throne, or not his throne, but Dumbledore's main chair. And behind that is the House Cup, which currently belongs to either Hufflepuff or Ravenclaw, I'm not really sure. That's one of the flaws with these sticker designs, is that you can't have all of their decorations unless you end up taking one off. So you kind of have to pick and choose like only one flag, depending on who you want to be the winner of the House Cup at the time. If you also look behind Harry there, you'll see a nice little fireplace. I like that little build. I think it looks good and works well enough for what it is. And then on the table, there is some ice cream. I think that's ice cream. Now I really am hungry for some ice cream, to be honest. But uh, once you see this place filled up with minifigures, it really starts to pop. So let's take a look at that. So like I said, once you get this place filled up with minifigures, it really starts to come alive. And you can see that this looks a lot like the Great Hall from the movies, even though, like I said, it's scaled down. But I think that LEGO did a really good job designing it in terms of keeping it nice looking and keeping it playable for kids. I think that overall this is probably the best Harry Potter set to come out, honestly, ever. Other than maybe the Diagon Alley set that came out back in 2009, I think. This is a very, very spectacular set. There is honestly something in it for everyone. And I think Lego did a really good job. Let's go ahead and take a look at the tower. Okay, and here's a look at the top of the tower. I just wanted to go ahead and point this out really quick. Technically, there are supposed to be three mini towers that stick off of here. Unfortunately, Lego didn't incorporate that. I think if there is a main inaccuracy, that would probably be it. But other than that, everything else in the set looks really great and really accurate. There is probably a really easy modification one could do to put that in there as well. So I think I might try to do that just to go ahead and get it to look a little bit more accurate than what LEGO has done here. As you can see, looking at the inside of the tower on the bottom floor, you have the moving staircases. I think that it's really cool that LEGO incorporated this, even though it's not quite accurate at all, but I, I can see what they were doing. They have the staircase movement in general. It looks good enough, I think, and it's good enough for a play set, especially when it's on the back side of the set. Moving up a level, you can see that this is the potions room. This is the classroom that Snape teaches in. I only wish that they would have given us Snape as the minifigure in this set instead of in the Whomping Willow set. I think that it, look, it would have been more accurate and would have made more sense to put him in this set, but that's okay. You can go ahead and get the Whomping Willow and connect the two sets and make your Hogwarts castle even bigger. Here's an overall look at all of the minifigures as well as the accessories that come in the set. As you can see, you get the Basilisk, one of the boats that the students ride in on, as well as the Mirror of Erised. While the Mirror of Erised doesn't exactly fit well inside the set itself, I'm really glad they included it. I think it's really cool. And it comes with those two interchangeable panels. Now that you've seen all the accessories, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the minifigures. Okay, and first up, here's a look at Harry Potter. 
This is the newest version of Harry Potter. He's got the short legs this time and he's got a new hair piece as well as the new wand mold. I think that this version of young Harry from the first movie is very, very good. There is nothing amazing about it, but it's very good. I think that the addition of the scar higher on the forehead as well as the new hair piece with the part in it to show the scar is a very, very good addition, but everything else is just kind of good. There's nothing great. I like the new wand pieces. Uh, I think they should have done them a long time ago, to be honest, but I'm glad we finally have them. I think they look really good. They look a lot better than those bar pieces that we had before. Here's a look at the other side of his face. He's got the scared expression, and I think that captures uh, scared Harry very well. Here he is with the sorting hat on. As you can see, the sorting hat has been molded to have a face, which is very good, and it looks very accurate to the film. This is probably my favorite piece in the set, other than the minifigures. This is probably my favorite molded piece, is the sorting hat. I think that it looks really good, and Harry with the sorting hat on also looks very good. Moving on, we have our newest version of Young Ron. This is Ron Weasley, and you can tell that his torso is 100% the same as Harry's. Which I think is okay because they all wear the same uniform over at Hogwarts, so I think it looks good. Like I said, for Harry though, nothing too spectacular. Ron also has a very scared expression. That is the expression that Ron uses most of the time because he is a big coward, for the most part. And he's scared of a lot of stuff, so I think it looks really good and Lego did a great job capturing the actor's looks. Here's the newest version of Hermione. I think Hermione's hairpiece is the best part about her. She looks really good with this new hairpiece. I think that it matches her hair very well from the films. She's got the same torso as the previous two young characters. So not much to see here other than her really great hairpiece. She also has a scared expression on the back of her head. And I think Lego did a very good job capturing both of her looks. Next up, we have our first uniform change with Draco Malfoy. He is from Slytherin, so his torso is printed Almost exactly the same except the tie is green and silver instead of red and gold. I think that this is a really good version of Malfoy. His hairpiece is dead on to the film. Perfect. His expression looks just about accurate. And his other side, the other side of his face looks very good as well. I like his mean expression better though because he is a big bad guy. Rounding out the children characters, we have Susan Bones. She is, I think she appears in the in a few of the films but she is only mentioned one time as far as I can remember in the first movie where they are going through the sorting hat I think she's like the second or third one to get called up she gets sorted into Hufflepuff as you can tell by her tie it is yellow and black and that marks the second uniform change she's not an iconic character or anything super special but I think they did a good enough job capturing her face on both of the prints and her hairpiece is good as well. Next up we have Professor Dumbledore. This is my favorite version of Dumbledore that we've gotten so far mainly because of the print. The printing on his torso and legs looks really great with the gold and the swirls and the designs and everything looks really good I think. So this is by far my favorite version of Dumbledore. There is the alternate face that he can have but with his beard it's kind of hard to tell what expression he's making. The only difference is that he does not have glasses with this side and he does with this side. I think he looks better with the glasses it makes more sense for the character because he generally had glasses on. So I think that this face, while it's okay, this one looks better. Moving on to Professor McGonagall, another great printing on this minifigure here. We have the legs and torso that match up together to create a long cloak. She looks really great and probably my second favorite figure in this lot. She has just really great printing. I love the dark green color. The printing goes onto her back as well. If you remove her hat, you can see that she has a second face as well. It's a stern McGonagall. She's upset. And I like the happy version better though because McGonagall is one of my favorite characters and I like to see my favorite characters happy. Next up here we have a ghost and his name is Nearly Headless Nick. I think that Lego did a good job capturing the look of Nearly Headless Nick in ghost form. He's got the silver printing with the white face and the white gloves just to show that he's not quite human. And they used the Beetlejuice hair piece which I think matches really perfectly with the character. I love the silver printing all over the figure. It looks really great. This figure will probably stay exclusive to this set 
And I think that that is a really cool thing because LEGO did a very good job with it. And for it to retain some value would be cool. Lastly, rounding out the regular sized minifigures, we have Professor Quirrell. He is the Defense Against the Dark Arts teacher in Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. He also is uh, playing symbiote to the Dark Lord himself, Voldemort. Which LEGO did a really great job printing on the back of his head the Voldemort face. Because if you remember from the film, he is quite ugly and quite deformed looking when he's on the back of Quirrell's head and I think Lego did a really great job capturing that. Overall nothing too special about the print. The scarf that goes from his head wrap all the way down to his chest I think looks really good. It matches perfectly and overall a solid figure. Lastly here for the figures we have Rubius Hagrid and Hagrid is one of the best characters from all of the films. He's just a fun loving guy. He's just all about the creatures one of my favorite characters in general and I think that it's really cool that Lego included his pink umbrella with this set and his lantern. These new lantern pieces look really great. I think that Lego did a fantastic job. Compared to the older Hagrid, this one is a lot better. The older Hagrid had black hair which is pretty inaccurate. He had these weird feet that weren't actually Lego legs but they fit with Lego legs. His hands were weird because they were not Lego hands. They actually had fingers in them which I thought was kind of cool, but also kind of weird for Lego to do. So overall, I like this new Hagrid a lot better. I think he looks better. He's got the standard short legs that just pop right into his main body piece. And I think that overall, Lego did a fantastic job updating Hagrid. Okay, and that's gonna do it for the review of the Great Hall set. I hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, definitely leave a like on this video and comment with what you think of the set as well. Let me know, are you going to be picking up any of the new Harry Potter sets? And if you are, which ones? And like I always say, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll be back very soon with more uploads.